What is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Tech Haberdashery. So in my ongoing um, re-evaluation of using more open source and floss software and systems, kind of after the Apple CSAM reveals and uh, the on-device scanning that they're going to be doing, I've decided to re-evaluate my blue bold in one to see if I can uh, kind of get a little more up to date with the system software and I know I'm a little late to the game on this but I have managed to find an Android open source project image of Android 11 and I was able to flash it to the system so this video is going to cover how to do that and how to flash different images they are all AOSP GSI which is generic system image files so everything we're going to put on here is a GSI there's nothing that is specifically made for the bold in one that I can determine nothing like lineage OS or graphene that kind of thing there are going to be some tools that you're going to need to have done beforehand I will not be going over how to get these up and running on your particular computer but the first thing you will need to do is to get ADB tools installed and running. You can do this on Windows, Linux, or Mac. You will also need to unlock the bootloader for the Blue Bolt N1. Uh, there is a program out there called Magisk that should be able to do that for you. I believe that's how I did it when I originally went through this. You will need to flash twerp onto the system as the recovery environment and you will need to erase every single thing on the system. Now there is no official source for twerp made for this particular model of phone. Uh, I, there are unofficial twerp environments out there. I don't know if they are valid or not, so I don't want to promote using them, but I will say that I did not use an official TWRP environment to get myself originally rooted and unlocked on this device but once you do have twrp installed you will need to erase everything and i do mean everything on the system every single partition that exists with our preamble out of the way i am now going to go ahead and show you that this is in fact running android 10 still this is a blank uh, aosp 11 GSI uh, so just showing you I've got it kind of customized the screens large got a few applications open and the point of this is to show you that this will not erase the data on your phone without you explicitly telling it to do so I'm going to overlay my terminal commands and you're getting an idea of what directory I'm in and what files I have so we are first going to enter ADB reboot bootloader that will get the system going through the restart process. This takes a minute. You will then see fast boot mode in the bottom left corner of the device. You are now in fast boot. You can go ahead and type in fast boot space flash system space your image file. We're going to go with the vanilla image on this one. This is just to show you how the process works. It takes a few minutes to run, all things considered. It's not too terribly long, but it's going to take a few minutes for every single one of these images, and I'm just going to leave this uncut for y'all to see the whole process.
once it is done flashing, we're gonna type in the command fast boot reboot. This will just cause the system to restart normally. The environment we were just in was called the fast boot environment. I don't think I covered that. Um, the ADB reboot bootloader command will put you into the fast boot environment. After that, it's going to take a couple minutes to reboot into the standard uh, Android environment. Uh, return you back to your home screen. Uh, again, I'm going to leave this uncut for the moment. Well, I'll cut the reboots and the flashing processes later for everybody so you don't have to sit and wait for it. This is just to show you the whole process from uh, beginning to end, if you will, for each individual image that you decide to flash onto the system. And this is just to show you that this is the vanilla image. Uh, there's no pin or anything like that on it. The fonts are the same size and the icons are the same size. So that's just to show that it does not, in fact, erase everything on your system. So we are going to give it another reboot into the fast boot environment. This time I am going to flash the system partition using the floss image. And this will put all of our free Libre and open source software onto the OS. done and we are going to fast boot reboot to get to the OS home screen once again. Returning to the home screen, unfortunately we only get one wallpaper through all of these, but you'll notice that the icon sizes and font size customizations are the same. Uh, it comes with all of the FOSS software that you might prefer on a vanilla AOSP device. This is Finnick from FDroid. Um, there's the apps that I opened before on the last boot are still in memory files, uh, something like Frost is here, um, which is the, I think it's a Facebook anonymizer. I don't use Facebook, so I'm not hundred percent sure, but things like canine mail, uh, open source transportation options, the micro G services are here for using the Aurora store. So, uh, lots of good FOSS stuff out of the box here. If this is what you would prefer to go with. But there is also the option to install AOSP 11 with the Google Apps installed, and I will show that to you real quick. Reboot back to fast boot environment. And go ahead and make sure our device is recognized. You can do this by typing fast boot devices and it will show up here. Uh, but since it is there, we're going to go ahead and fast boot flash system and we're going to choose the option with GAPS. That's Google Apps. I call it GAPS. And it will begin the imaging process as before. Okay, the GAPS image is done. We're going to fast boot reboot back to AOSP again. And now you will notice that this time our home screen is a little bit different. It's got your Android setup options. This is to take you through the Google setup. There's a lot less software on here, but you'll notice things like Gboard is installed, Google Chrome is installed, and uh, yeah, it's uh, already the data mining is beginning to occur. It's letting me know that it doesn't have my network information. So anyway, so this is the. Uh, AOSP with gaps installed, it has Play Store and that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and reboot back to the fast boot environment. This time I am going to show you how to actually erase everything on the system. 
so that it is a legitimately clean OS with no customizations at all. To do this, we are going to erase the user data and cache partitions. We do that by typing fastboot format user data, followed by fastboot format cache, or cache if you prefer it that way. Same thing. You can also use the erase command instead of format if you prefer. Once that's done, give the system a reboot. On this restart, you will notice that, hey, look, there we are with the setup page. So this is to configure Android for the first time. This is with the Google Apps image. So I did not re-image the system again. I just cleared user data and cache. And this is how it's going to show up when you're first time login. Assuming you're using gaps. If you're using vanilla or flaws, it'll look a little bit different, but it's going to ask you for your Wi-Fi and SIM information and so on and so forth. So uh, I don't want to show any of that on screen, so I'm not going to set that up now. But you understand, I think, the point I'm trying to make. Um, we're going to go ahead and I think I said, um, couldn't remember the actual shutdown commands, so I just decided to shut it down straight from the screen. There is something else that we need to discuss, and that's the performance of this device under AOSP 11. I don't have a very good reason for the differences in performance that we're going to see with the upcoming benchmarks. I am going to report these based on the three different images that I have installed on this device. It is AOSP 11 Floss, AOSP 11 Vanilla, and AOSP 11 Gaps, that's Google Apps. For Gaps, I had to attempt to register my device ID with Google in order to get the Play Protect services to run. Unfortunately, signing in uh, with Google was impossible because my Android ID was not recognized. It seemed to accept it on the Google registration site, but no, I could just never sign into any of the Google services on the Bold N1 with the Google Apps image. So, kind of a wash there. I reran the benchmarks with the apps that I could get from um, the uh, Aurora store and. Hopefully those are reasonably accurate to what you can expect if you can get your Google Play services to run. So we will start with something simple uh, that kind of everybody is familiar with. Uh, we'll start with Geekbench and check those scores in comparison to each other. Geekbench is the starts out the most interesting of these simply because there's such a disparity between what vanilla AOSP does in comparison to the Floss AOSP. Again, Floss is the one that has the free and open source apps pre-installed. The performance difference in terms of Geekbench is significant, and I don't know if that's because there's something that's added with the Floss libraries that are less, perhaps, optimized for performance. I mean, the phone feels like it's running fine, but it the scores tell a different story entirely. When we compare it next to the gaps uh, image that we put on here, the scores are nearly identical. I mean, it's very much margin of error. The single core score is identical and multi-core is only off by 14 points. There's also the contention that this is not all that different from Android 10 and Android 9, so Floss 11 is definitely the standout worst performer. AndroBench is, between the different AOSP 11 versions I installed, are all pretty similar. Where it's very much a shocker is the disparity of performance between Android 9 and 10 and Android 11. Those two versions of Android are actually looking somewhere a little higher than five times the amount of read and write performance in terms of sequential read and write. For random read and write, it's about double, which is not as much of a difference, but it's still significant. I'm not sure what the file system differences are, if it's a file system issue, if uh, APIs have changed. I, I wish I could tell you. All I can tell you for sure is that in all three versions of Android 11, the built-in storage is operating significantly worse than that of prior operating system versions. Given everything we've seen so far, I don't think I need to break down 
the slingshot benchmarks one by one. They are more or less all aligned save for the FLOSS implementation of AOSP 11. Again, whatever FLOSS is doing in the background is crippling the performance of the graphics and processor system. So uh, it must be APIs since Vulkan isn't supported on any of these. And I'll just leave it at that. I will throw in one final caveat for the road here, just for giggles. The Google Apps version of AOSP 11 doesn't seem to have a gallery built in, so you will have to sideload F-Droid or Aurora Store or something in order to be able to view your pictures. I think with that I am going to end the video here. The Blue Bold N1 with AOSP 11, the generic system image is perfectly usable if you go with the vanilla build. Actually it's pretty usable if you go with floss as well, just be aware there seems to be something that causes a little bit of CPU throttling and maybe even GPU throttling. I can't be sure, I haven't dug into it that hard. But it's still perfectly usable. Um, uh, being privacy focused, I will of course not encourage anybody to use Google Apps, but you determine your own threat model. If you have to have Google services on your mobile device, then by all means this is an option that is available to you. Just be aware of the hurdles you may have actually getting signed in to the Google services. So with that everyone, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care now.